Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name's Alex and you are watching BC Adventure. Today we're going to be checking out the Copy Party Docker that's growing in popularity due to its simplicity and ability to run on virtually any device. Now, when I say any device, I mean going back to Windows 3.1, all the way to a Nintendo Switch. So, this is a very versatile, very easy to use system. Um, but even the developer has said that the user interface is kind of intimidating and a little confusing to people who just launch it and try and start using it. So we're going to go over the setup, the configuration file, how to get it started on Unraid Docker, and how to upload a file, how to use it, how to uh, use some of the hotkeys. But yeah, it's it's a really cool, simple, lightweight system that can literally be deployed on any system. And I noticed there are a lack of tutorials on how to get it set up on Unraid. So that's what we're going to do today. And one of the really cool things about this uh, application is that the developer has committed to providing updates, but only if the user who's deploying it wants to update it. Now, um, about six months ago, there was a pretty heavy vulnerability that uh, essentially avoided authentication to access the files. And the developer, they, they corrected that in a matter of hours as soon as the vulnerability was released. So it's, it's a really cool system and I'm really excited to show you. Let's jump right into it. So to get started with setting this Docker up, the first thing we need to do is create a share folder for file storage for this application. So I've already gone ahead and done that. I created one called Copy Party. And the way I set mine up is to first move or copy files to the cache drive and then move them over to the array when my mover function kicks in on my Unraid server. Now, we also need to create a config file. Now, if you're unfamiliar with creating config files, that's totally fine. You don't need to have any uh, knowledge into creating a config file because the creator has uh, very graciously created one to get us started. Now, the only thing that I have to say about the config file is that it can be a little confusing to look at if you don't know what you're doing with configuration files, but I'm going to walk you through on how to get copy party set up and ready to go so that you can at least just get your file server up and running and use it locally. This configuration file I don't recommend using for a internet facing instance of this. This configuration file is going to be good if you're connecting to your server via a VPN like uh, Wi-Fi man through Ubiquity or Tailscale. And um, it's, it's not secure to be using internet face it. So I'm going to show you how to get this, this program up and running and make it so that you can utilize it in a very basic way. Now, um, I was watching the creator's YouTube channel of this application, and they did mention that uh, another community member is working on a much better user interface experience. So uh, stay tuned to the updates for that because it may make it a lot more functional if you're intimidated by the uh, provided dashboard. And I do have to admit that I was a little intimidated the first time I deployed it. I didn't quite understand how to use it. It's kind of all over the place. But once I figured out where things were and what they did, it just kind of all fell into place. So now that we have, or once you have your uh, share directory all ready to go, we're going to head on over to the apps tab and we're going to search for copy party, all one word. It helps if I would spell it right. So from here, we're going to click install. And then here, we need to set where our storage is going to be. So I'm just going to remove share and then I've got copy party right here. Now that's all we need to do for the setup but one thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grab the example configuration 
And to do that, we're going to uh, just open up the link that's uh, attached here. And you're going to be given uh, essentially this uh, easy to use configuration file. Now, one thing I want you to take note of is the username and password here. So the username is Ed and the default password is Wark, W-A-R-K. So remember that. Now, if you don't want to create a file on, uh, like if you don't have the knowledge or, or know how to create a configuration file, you can actually just download the file right here and then we can upload it to our server, which I'm gonna show you how to do. So I'm just gonna close out of this because I already have the file downloaded. And from here, we're going to click apply. Now it's a very lightweight container. It's only 66 megs, as you can see. And once this is downloaded, we can't just jump right into it. I'll show you what happens if you try, but it's not gonna work. So once we click done, I'll go to actions and we'll open up the web UI. And as you can see, it says copy party refused to start due to a fail safe, invalid server config, check server log. So we don't need to check the log because I already know what's going on here. Now, for some reason, when this installs, it creates another folder within the app data folder under copy party. And uh, it's again, uh, it's like a duplicate almost. It's called copy party. So the first thing we need to do is go back to actions and we need to edit this container. So from here under config, we need to change this. The, so once we click on here, we'll see another folder called copy party. We need to click that and then just get off to the side here and click and then click apply. Now, I don't know why it does this, but it does for some reason. And this threw me off right off the bat. So just to avoid you that frustration, just go back immediately after deploying the container, edit it, and then make sure you're you're adding that duplicate folder. So from here, if we go into actions and web UI, we're still getting this same thing because the config file is not there. Now, the way I'm gonna upload my configuration file is I'm gonna go over to shares. I'm going to open up my app data folder and I'm gonna go to copy party. And then in here, copy party again and then I'm going to upload. And here I've already downloaded the copy party config file. I'm just gonna click it, click upload. And then we need to go back to our dockers and we need to restart this container. Now that that's done, we'll click on the logs and we can see here that uh, it is up and running. So we're gonna exit out. We're going to open the web UI and we're presented with this very rudimentary user interface. Now, to get started, we're going to click on login and we're going to use the default password WARK, W A R K, and enter. And that's it. We're now logged in. Now, what can we do with Copy Party? Well, we can do a number of things. We can watch video, we can rotate video, we can enable thumbnails, we can play music, we can enable an equalizer for the music, we can uh, actually play this stuff in the background on an iPad, an iPhone, an Android, so you get the media controls on your home screen like we used to be able to with YouTube before pre premium was introduced. So it's a really easy to use, uh, essentially drag and drop file server. Now, one of the really cool things is that if we wanna download files off the server, we can select multiple and it'll actually automatically compress them and then send them over uh, over the internet to our, to our device that we're trying to download on. Uh, we can also upload uh, from any device as well. So one of the neat things here is that we can enable extra hotkeys on the uh, main dash here. And uh, so on the left hand side, we see, or sorry, this side, uh, we can see that we have a root here. So if I want to create a new folder, I can click root and we can, nope, where are we here? we can create a new directory within root. So before we go any further with this, we're going to edit the configuration file and I'm gonna show you how to do that within Unraid. 
So we're going to head on over to shares and we're going to get into our app data folder. We're going to open up copy party and we're going to open up the other copy party folder. Now from here, we're going to click on the copy party.config or .conf file. And here for accounts, we have a username and password, which shows right here. So we're just going to change this password. You set it to whatever you want. I'm just going to use password one, two, three as the example for here. We're going to click save and then we're going to head back over to Docker and we need to restart this container. So now that it's restarted, we're going to open up the web UI and we'll close the old one. We're going to click login and we're going to use the password password one, two, three. And here we go. We are now logged in. Now let's create a folder. Now tons of emoticons or emojis that we see here. It's, it's a little intimidating, but if we just hover over, it'll actually tell us what these options are. So to create a new folder, we're going to click on the folder tab here, and we're just going to create something called test folder and then make directory. Now we're, it automatically moves us into that folder. Now, what do we want to do with this? Well, let's, let's upload a file. Now this is super easy to do. I'm just going to bring up my folders here and we are going to copy from my Mac drive. So I'm, I'm literally just, so this is actually my last video. So it's got all my files and everything. So we're just going to literally drag and draw. So right now it's saying that it's queued the files. We're going to click OK. And yeah, it does multiple files at a time. As you can see, we're getting 107 megabits or megabytes uploading per second. And just like that, everything has uploaded. Now, if I click on the main screen here and hit G, it's actually going to provide thumbnails. So here we've got uh, some some examples or some tester thumbnails I was trying to work with. And then this is what we ended up with. And then we've even got the video file here, too. So if I click play. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. My name it is, is watching BC playing the video. We can skip or sorry, we can uh, we can scroll through uh, images just like we were using a, uh, a file explorer. But if we Hello, go back to the video here, the we My can scrub through. Linux stuff As you can see, it's I really responsive. To give back to the community. And if we close out of that and we scroll up here, we can actually open up media player options. So this actually has a built in audio equalizer, which is pretty awesome. You know, for just a very simple 66 megabyte file server, this has a lot of functionality. And to close this out, we just click on that uh, icon there. So yeah, this is this is pretty cool. I'm actually just going to hit G again, and that'll bring us back to the file list. But it lets us know the size. It lets us know the IP address that uploaded it, the date and time, and the file creation date and time here as well. So right off the bat this is this is pretty neat so now that we have files uploaded to our file server uh how do we get those files onto other devices how do we download them from the file server so to do that i've gone back to my my thumbnail view and from here i'm going to select multi-select and then say if i wanted to download the uh, image files here all I need to do is select the ones that I want, and then I'm going to come down here and I can either select DL for download, or you can hit Y, or you can download as a zip. So if I click zip, it went ahead and it compressed those files and it downloaded them. So if I bring this up here, we can see these are the files that it, it downloaded for us. Now I can close out of that. And that is pretty much it for um, downloading files individually or as a group. Now, if I deselect multi-select, oh, 
I've got to unselect them first. So if I deselect multi-select and I click the zip folder here or the zip file, it'll download everything in this folder from the file server. And not only does it download it, but it compresses it and then sends it over. So this is a really easy to use. Once you figure out how to actually navigate around it, it is a really simple to use system. And uh, you can also mount this this as a webdav folder as well so if you if you prefer using webdav you can actually go ahead and you can you can download uh, or sorry you can access this drive or this file server as a drive in webdav through windows or mac or linux what have you um i'm going to link the creator's video on uh all the features and all the different things you can do with it because they do a way better job at explaining it the thing that they didn't do was show you how to actually download it and set it up on your server. So with all that said and done, I hope you found this video useful. This was a uh, really neat uh, project done by this creator. And um, I can't thank them enough for, for making such an easy to use file server. If you guys would like to see a deeper dive into Copy Party and a little bit more of the functionality within it and how to set up more of the options that are available, let me know down in the comments and I will do a part two to this video. But with all that said and done, I hope you enjoyed it. I, I hope you found this easy to follow. I'm going to link to the creator's original video explaining everything down in the description, as well as I'll put a uh, link card somewhere up in the left or right hand side of the screen. Uh, but with all that, uh, I'm going to let you guys go. Take it easy, everyone. I appreciate all of you. Thank you for watching. And if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. Take it easy, everyone.